Today's game is Daydreamin' Davy, developed by Sculptured Software, a company that had an abbreviated lifespan that involved getting acquired by Acclaim in the mid-90s and then being entirely dissolved just a few short years later. Anyway, we all remember tuning out during class when we were younger, right? The teacher was droning on about something in social studies you didn't really care about, and if you were like me, you thought about getting home to play your Nintendo. I tried to think of new areas to search for secrets in The Legend of Zelda, or wondered if my mom had turned the Nintendo off while I was at school because I had paused it in the middle of a Tecmo Super Bowl season. Sculptured Software developed a game with a concept centered entirely around daydreaming. So let's see what's up with Daydreamin' Davy on the NES. So, as you might predict, you're Davy, sitting at school while drifting in and out of focus during a history lesson when suddenly those lessons transform you out of reality. You'll spend all your time controlling Davy in his dreams, either through a medieval-themed time of Merlin the Magician, or in ancient Greek history that even takes a dip down to hell, or out in the Old West. These three settings repeat throughout, but vary a bit in terms of what you're expected to do. To control Davy, A and B are generally attack. For example, in the Old West, you'll start with a whip, but you can buy a gun and equip both. So, since the two action buttons are attack, that means this is one of those games where you'll have to press A and B together to jump. Fortunately, there's no double dragon styled pesky platforming here, it's nothing too picky, but you'll have to do it to access some areas of the map. The objective for each level is never clear off the bat. You'll have to rely on clues from NPCs you come across. It starts out simple, just navigate the maze of bushes until you find a white knight who tells you to go find Excalibur, which you then use to defeat a dark knight named Lumper. That's right. After you complete the level, you get to watch a cutscene with a bunch of characters who look like they were drawn for a Mike Judge cartoon. This establishes the flow for the entire game. Play out a dream, watch a cutscene that links the dream to reality, repeat. The next level is the Old West, and this is where the game starts throwing in some wrinkles. You'll have to figure out how to make money, generally by trading things you amass in your inventory, to buy a gun. So you can honor the sheriff's request and take out this heckin' bad guy holed up in the blacksmith shop. Just know to shoot the gun out of his hand instead of shooting him square in the head. That was the first thing I tried. And the second. And third thing. Turns out, yeah, shoot the gun instead. If you want, you can use your NES light gun to shoot, but the cursor works just as well. One thing to be weary of here are the snakes. These things are aggravatingly difficult to kill and can easily poison you. Antidotes are expensive too, so just be careful. Then, out in ancient Greece, you can enter temples and chat with statues of gods and goddesses for tips on where to go and what to do. Some are helpful, most are not. The most helpful thing you'll find in this level will be apples for your health. Whack all the trees. The real world story marries the dreams to reality in some really goofy ways. Drawing the gun on the Wild West Bandit stems from Davy's teacher telling him to draw during artwork time. Then, after his dream is up, it turns out he was sleep firing a squirt gun in class. Then, during history class, one of your classmates is wearing comically huge, gigantic glasses, and you dream about putting out the eye of a cyclops, and it turns out you were trying to sleep stab one of the poor girl's eyes out with a pencil. Not cool, David. The game's difficulty ramps up quickly from this point forward as you start to revisit each of these locations over and over. At one point, you venture down into Hades and you have to remember where invisible sinkholes are to get around, or else you'll be swallowed and have to repeat the whole level over. It's hell. The game's mechanics are all over the place. Each level becomes a sort of standalone experience. It never feels quite satisfying or fun. There's plenty of charm in the concept, certainly. What kid didn't dream of being a Wild West deputy or taking on a dark medieval knight? The recipe for a good time is here, but the execution misses the mark and ends up being needlessly tedious. For example, in the second level you have to go all the way to Hades, only to then be told you have to bring a coin with you to pay Sharon to float across, but you can't get that coin until you go through all this first and find out about the coin. And it turns out, you have to whack a tree near where you start the level to get the coin anyway. It's trivial and cryptic things like this, finicky combat where you're not really sure if you're doing what you intend to, and the constantly disrupted flow to the level designs that had me daydreaming this game was better. All said, there are 11 total stages with each of those three area types repeating multiple times. The good news is there are passwords here, so you can pick up your progress where you leave off, and because of that, the only thing stopping you from going forward is your own patience. The challenge is here though, whether you get stuck figuring out what to do or where to go next, or because a boss is being particularly pesky, this game definitely has its fair share of roadblocks to stifle progress, so good luck.
For a game to come out as late as this one did on the NES lifespan in June of 92, you'd expect more out of a HAL-published game here. This is the same company that published the Adventures of Lolo series and Kabuki Quantum Fighter shortly before and Kirby's Adventure shortly after. Oh well, this would be the last we ever saw of this boy and his imagination. And that does it for Daydreaming Davey on the NES. Don't stab people with pencils. Or anything. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.